Hey guys, Caleb's Cards here. Coming at you with another TTM Mail Week recap episode for you. I'm going to be covering what I got in for this week. And I think there's a few uh, leftovers from um, last weekend or um, some pickups. So we'll go ahead and cover those. So um, first off, we have some baseball cards coming back signed uh, quite quickly um, for the Lampila kids. I sent off uh, a few return or a few requests asking some baseball players if they would be willing to sign for them since they like baseball. And uh, we got the first guys back. So we got Bill Stein on 83 Fleer. We got 82 Fleer. We've got two 1980 tops and 79 tops. So thank you, Mr. Stein. Then we got Mr. Joe Sambito, who signed quite a few cards. I, I never really send this many cards at one time. I just asked him if he wanted to do that for him. And uh, he did, so. Several cards signed by him. And the 79. So very cool. And then he also just wrote down below on the letter right there. And if you guys wanted to pause and read what I put in, that's perfectly fine. Um, so definitely, um, we have uh, Jeff told me that they've gotten uh, about 13,000 plus baseball cards donated uh, for them. So that's really cool. Uh, so they're going to have quite quite a quite a day when they get all that stuff. So um, looking forward to that. So I'll, I'll hold on to those, let that pile grow, and then send it off to them. Then we got some football returns. This is coming back from Stan Humphreys. This was out for a while on the Domino's quarterback challenge card. And then we got punter on the 1985 Super Bowl champions, Super Bowl shuffle Chicago Bears, Mari Buford. Signed three photos. So I found some just some pretty cool photos that couldn't pass up sending to him. It's a pretty cool one. Celebrating there, hoisting Mike Ditka. So, very nice turn there from Mari Buford. And then we got some hockey. Uh, this was sent to Canada. I had that envelope address for a while, I just never uh, had the uh, Canadian stamps at the time. But I have Tomas Cabrolet. Sign so one, two, and three and for some reason I don't know if you guys noticed some of these photos some of the signatures are rubbing off so I'm gonna have to figure out why they're doing that or maybe switch to a different um, company to print the photos or just start printing them myself again <laughs> so, or, or try glossy again so I don't know what's going on there um, but there's quite a few that have that problem um, this was actually went to my parents house I guess it was an email request that I made quite some time ago. Honestly, I had forgotten about it, but this is Jolyn Wilkinson. Uh, so this on the back that she's 17. So I guess she'll be about 18 by now, because this was taken 2021. Um, since she had 19 wins in 2013, so she must have been like 9 years old or something like that. If that's the case, I, I don't know. Um, but I think uh, she's an upcoming race car driver. So um, yeah, that was, that was requested a while ago. Um, do some, take a break from TTMs. We got, in case you didn't see it, and I got this in a box somewhere. I don't remember. Uh, Joe Sackick autograph. I, don't remember, I can't remember where I found that. But, yeah. I <laughs> uh, got a Kendall Graveman that was in the Antique Mall shoebox. Along with this one, this Clint Frazier graded nine. And then I picked up this on eBay, a Hoyt Wilhelm Hall of Fame signed uh, index card. It's like three dollars. So it would be interesting to get. And then I found this one, uh, Bill Wall. I think I got for under five. So didn't didn't have a Bill Wall. So thought, thought that was interesting. 
got those. I also picked up some other ones. Um, I was going to say for gifts and things. I've um, got some celebrity returns. One uh, they did ask that I didn't share on camera, so I will keep that a secret, I guess. Uh, but so I can't show that one. But I did get, I think, about six celebrities that, uh, this week. Um, we got Leah Aris. Signed three photos. Ooh, those two. Very cool. We got Miss Mary Jo Catlett. And then for some reason, I sent her uh, the wrong photo. And she wrote that back. That got all smeared too. And it, the green got all over her photo, and I had to wipe it off. Luckily, it came off. But yeah, this is uh, from the Flying Nun. Uh, Google listed her as being in that. <laughs> and that was her. So clearly, Google um, doesn't know what they're talking about. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, I guess I just gotta, uh, if I, if there's any doubt, just, I guess, don't even send it. Um, we got Miss Ray Don Chong. Signed two photos. One of them sadly smeared badly because it went on the back. So, again, yeah, I don't know what's going on with those photos. And this one, uh, he signed the back and, uh, the back of this one... <laughs> Got all over the front of that one, and the back of this one kind of rubbed, and this one is almost not even legible. But uh, that's Mark Linnell. Um, so yeah, I don't, again, not his fault or anything. It's these these kind of photos, I don't know. This photo stock, uh, very strange. And we got two eight by ten signed by Amanda Klutz, I think. Um, she has her own talk show called The Talk. <laughs> Uh, I sent two photos to her, wasn't sure she signed them, but she sent back some pre-signed 8x10s, so that's cool, that works. Then we have a couple World War II we can share with you. We got Shinye Jima, who was a World War II veteran during the Pacific Theater Operations, and he's a Japanese language specialist in the 308th Intelligence Service Organization. So that's pretty cool. That's a uh, uh, autograph from the World War II collection I don't have of somebody who was in that uh, particular branch. Then we got one that came in from Scott Masters. Uh, links down below uh, to his uh, information if you're curious. But this is Jack Boecki. Um, his World War II story is a unique one. He was born in Rotterdam in 1925. And he grew up with fond memories of the city and its people and of his family and childhood. All of it was shattered in May 1940 when the German Blitzkrieg turned west towards the Netherlands and Jack City came under assault. The family lost everything in the bombing and was forced to start all over amid mounting restrictions on Jews which saw Jack going into hiding. The family he was staying with soon after warned him that it had become too dangerous and Jack off and Jack took off to avoid capture. From there, Jack obtained a fake identity and began his series of remarkable escapes, repeatedly eluding the grasp of the Nazis. Jack left the Netherlands and escaped the uh, escaped to France, where the underground put him in contact with agents of the American OSS, the original version of the CIA. Uh, they arranged to get Jack to Britain, where his talents were recognized. Jack was dispatched to the United States for military training. In March 1944, as the liberation of occupied Europe drew near, Jack's unit was ordered to England. Now an agent of the Counterintelligence Corps, CIC, he had received special training to uncover war criminals and would soon put his skills to use on his most important missions yet. On June 8th, just two days after the initial D-Day landings, Jack's team of agents landed on Utah Beach in Normandy, France, and Jack's unit followed the U.S. advanced fighting forces that liberated France Belgium and Luxembourg, liberating camps and arresting spies, collaborators, and anyone who posed a threat to the Allies. When World War II ended in May 1945, Jack and his unit were assigned to the security force of the Nuremberg War Crimes Trials. Jack returned to Holland a few years later only to learn that entire generations of his family were murdered in the Sobibor death camp. He was completely alone in the world. Soon after, he immigrated to Canada to start a new life and create his own family. Jack wrote his memoir to share his moving story of hope, bravery, 
and perseverance against all odds. So wow, that might be the most impressive and maybe even one of the most sad stories uh, we've got from Scott yet. So that's, uh, that's definitely an interview that's worth watching. So wow, Jack Bowecki, there's this autograph down there and there's some pictures of him as well. So very cool. Um, I think he was also on uh, the Veterans Breakfast Club, if I remember. I think they brought him on the show as well. Uh, I think I may have been in attendance for that one. Pretty sure. I do remember them interviewing Jack. So, Wow, so that's, uh, that's a pretty cool mail day, I'd say, for this week. Um, I did send out a, uh, or I will send out a few here, um, probably Monday on my way to work. Um, also, I'm going to get Chris's pictures sent out to him that I ordered for him. And just I've been sorting cards and putting them away, so I'm um, working on that and trying to chip away at the videos um, for the antique mall and the boxes that came from Daniel. So um, look out for those in the future. So thanks guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Hope you guys have a great day and I'll talk to you later. Bye.